Hi YouTube, welcome to the fifth and final build video of my 2015 Sun Hokey Prusa i3. In this video I will be covering the installation of the heated print bed and the ZN stop. I will also be covering all of the wiring and the first startup. I should apologize in advance for my hand being in the way during the wiring portion of this video but it was really hard to position the camera while still having access to the circuit board. I will say that the instructions included with the printer are very, very good for the wiring, and if you follow the directions, you'll have no problem. I hope you enjoyed the video, and please like and comment below. If you want to keep up to date on my future 3D printing videos, please subscribe to me. In this part, we'll be finishing off the mechanical build of the 3D printer. For this, we're going to assemble the heated bed and put on the ZN stop. For this, we'll need four M3 by 30 millimeter screws, four black springs, I'm going to add in four or eight washers as well as four flange nuts. For the Z-axis end stop, we'll need the end stop, the last piece of acrylic, an M3 by 16 millimeter screw, uh, and two M3 by 12 millimeter screws, and three M3 nuts. So we'll just start with the heated bed. So this is going to go in like this through the bottom with the spring underneath in between the acrylic and the aluminum build plate. To protect the acrylic, I'm going to add a washer on each side. Now we'll just repeat that on all four corners. I actually decided to add a, a washer to every part, every point where the, the flange nut will spin against the acrylic just to protect it so it doesn't wear out the acrylic. Well, that was a little bit more difficult than uh, advertised. Now we'll put on the Z end stop. For this we'll need the acrylic part, the end stop, the screws, and the nuts mentioned earlier. So the end stop just gets mounted with two M3 by 12 millimeter screws and two M3 nuts. Now this is one part of the design that I feel is kind of lacking. They designed this part, I, can't, I don't know if you can see it, not really helping. They designed this part with only one mounting hole on this side, whereas if they just laser cut another mounting hole here and here, it would be much more stable and not kind of bend and, and rotate uh, under any load. But that just gets tightened on here, like so. So this is something I will be improving on. There's a nice uh, model out on Thingiverse that I'll be printing once I get this calibrated. But it's something that Sun Hokey could improve next year. So this brings me to the end of the mechanical building of this 3D printer. The only thing that's left is to connect up the power supply, which I have right here. Connect up the power supply and then do all the wiring up. In this part of the build, we'll be covering the wiring of the 3D printer. Wiring can be very dangerous, and so if you're not comfortable, follow the directions, they're pretty good. But if not, ask for help. So I've decided to use some loop crimp connectors on the ends here to securely mount it into the power supply. So I'm just gonna put those on now. So those are nice and securely attached. So the plug gets joined to 7, 8, and 9 with ground going in 7, neutral going in 8, and live going in 9. So that's power input cable secure. Now time for the power cables that go from the power supply to the circuit board. So we'll secure those to the power supply the same way we did the 
Input cable with two crimp connectors. Now the positive red wire will go in spot one, and then negative black wire will go in spot four. So we'll just screw these on as we did the other ones. And then close the little cover. One other thing you have to check is the input voltage. I'm in North America, so 110 volts, but elsewhere you might need 220 volts. There's a little switch here on the side to adjust that. Now we'll mount the power supply to the right side of the 3D printer. For this, you can leave the power supply and four M4 by 12 millimeter screws. Now that that's complete, I'm gonna go and run all these cables over to the circuit board over here, and then I'll cut to the circuit board and I'll show you where, where all the parts plug in. Okay, let's begin wiring up the circuit board. We'll start off with the power supply cables. They come up to this attachment here. They're quite short, so fitting them in will be interesting. Note, there is a positive and negative on this one, so make sure that you know which one's which. Now we'll move on to the heat bed wires. These don't matter which side you put them in. They just go in the next two connectors here and here. Now we'll move on to the hot end connectors. These will slot into the terminals there and there. These, once again, are not, do not have polarity to them. We'll now put in the fan that's mounted at the hot end. So this goes on this first set of pins right here. Now put in the thermistor for the hot end as well. And that will go down here. At this point we may as well connect the thermistor for the heated bed as well. And that goes right next to the thermistor for the hot end. These bottom two terminals here and here, they're kind of hard to see because they're black, is where the LCD screen connects. Now I haven't shown how the LCD D screen gets mounted because I want to change that up as well. So I was just going to use it you know, lying next to the printer, but this is where it connects in here. We'll then put in the three end stops. So it goes, they are marked, but it goes X, sorry, Z, Y, and X going up. Um, and there's a positive and negative side. So we're just going to start with the Z end stop here. All that remains are the stepper motor inputs, and those go right on in here. Now what does come supplied are these little heat sinks to go on top of the processors to make sure they stay cool. I haven't added those on yet, but I will. And when you do, you want to make sure that the fins are in the vertical direction to allow for the heat, the airflow to go across them the best. So we'll just start connecting up the stepper motors. Start with the one on the bottom with the Z-axis 2 stepper motor. And the Z-axis 2 stepper motor is actually the one on the right side of the printer next to the board. So that goes right down in here. And then we go to the extruder one. Tangle that here. Now I'm just going to put a zip tie around these this cable here just to keep it a little bit neater.
Now we move on to Z-axis one, and that's the motor on the right-hand side of the printer. Then we will place the Y-axis motor. Finally, the X-axis motor. Now I'm just gonna hook up the ribbon cables for the LCD screen, and then I think we'll be ready to power this up. So there we have it, a fully wired up Sun Hoagie Prusa i3 controller board. So I just finished uh, building the 3D printer. I've just kind of did some, a little bit of cable management here. Plugged it in, it seems to work. Check this out. It's working! Uh, so there's some tuning I have to do. Um, but overall, it seems to work. Build wasn't too bad. Uh, I mean, it was difficult at points, but I've had Lego that was more difficult than this. Uh, it took me a while, but mostly because I was filming videos. I think if I hadn't been filming videos, I think three, four hours is probably fair for this. Once again, just stay tuned. Thanks.